welcome to the February the 20th, 1996 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie. As we bring you the history of our city and some of the people that have been important in making this history and continue to make history today. This is our history tape number 270 and it's with much excitement that we bring you the family of Alan W. Hawthorne. The father could not be with us today, but he sent his two goodwill ambassadors to help us really get acquainted with the Hawthorne family as we continue to celebrate Black History Month on It Happened in Grand Prairie. And at this time, I'm just very excited to welcome two young men to the set, Mr. Jimmy Hawthorne, who is the Reverend Jimmy Hawthorne. Welcome to the set. Thank you. Reverend, we're very glad to have you with us today. Glad to be here. Wonderful. And Larry, his younger brother, we're so glad to welcome you, mm -hmm. uh, a wonderful right. uh, educator in your own right. And we're just so pleased that you all are going to share your lives, and especially the lives of the um, Allen W. Hawthorne family. Uh, let's begin with you, Reverend Jimmy, if we could. And would you look out into your camera over here and, and talk right. with us a, a little bit about your family, your genealogy, name your parents, and uh, a little bit of history about them. Would you do that for us? Yes. Uh, my parents' name is Alan. father's name is Alan Willie Hawthorne. And my mother's name is Margaret Rose Hawthorne. <coughs> uh, she also brought 14 children nine girls and five boys. I'm the oldest of the boys, and Larry's the second oldest. And uh, my mother's now deceased. And uh, my father's father, Sylvester Hawthorne, is also deceased. And my mother's father, Fred D. Lee Sr., is deceased. Okay. And the Hawthorne family migrated from Seagerville to Grand Prairie. From Seagerville, Texas? Seagerville, Texas. Okay. Uh, About what year? Around 1920. Around the year 1920, your yeah. father or your grandfather came to Grand Prairie? My grandfather's, my grandfather came to Grand Prairie. All right. My father's father. Uh, and where did he settle in the area uh, of Grand Prairie? On Spike Street. On Spike Street? In South Dadworth, yes. In South, well you have just had a, a heritage there that is second to none with a grandfather and a father, and now uh, you're coming right along in their footsteps. Right, and, and my uh, grandfather's father and mother in Seagerville, praise the Lord, they also uh, organized St. John Baptist Church in Seagerville, Texas. I see. And it still stands today, and every fourth Sunday in September is that homecomings day. Yes. There. And my grandfather's brother, Nathaniel Hawthorne, which is deceased also, he was a minister for 60 years. And uh, we used to go there every fourth Sunday in September, and uh, we would do the preaching and thing for that. Where my, grand my great grandfather and grandmother organized that church. Oh, and that he, is wonderful. My dad was named after him because his name was Alan also, yes. my great grandfather. All right. Amen, so. uh, what brought your great grandfather to Grand Prairie, Texas? Was it work or what? You mean my grandfather? Yes, your well, grandfather. Okay, he came here to work and make. Uh, there was better things going up here for him than, yes. than it was at Seagville at the time, because mostly everything they done in Seagville was farming. I see. So, and this is where my grandfather also, as well as my father, got into roofing with R. B. Knopf. Oh. R. B. Knopf Roofing Company here in Grand Prairie. Yes, Perth. of course. Yeah, that's where they mm -hmm. started. They started working for him. For him, and then finally, I believe, tell me about your dad's business. And that's my dad, exciting. My dad came from. He got his training at R.B. North Roofing, and then since then, for the last 50 some years, he's been roofing, has his own business. And uh, he's now retired now, but he's still, uh, mm -hmm. he came to be one of the best roofers around in, in the city, I'm proud to say. Okay, because, does he live in Grand Prairie, Texas? Yes, he lives at 1801 Spike Street. He's still yes. in Grand Prairie, Texas. Yes. And uh, he is uh, 76 years old. And yes. He's also my idol. Yes. Because, uh, Been a good mentor, hasn't he? Good, a great mentor because he, mm -hmm. he's also blessed us. So God blessed us to have a father that will uh, took care of us. Mm -hmm. You know, we've never been on welfare. Never, never yes. lived in apartments. He, he provided a home, and he, he, he can do so many things that, that, uh, 
you know, you wouldn't think a seventh grade educated man could do. Yes. But God really richly blessed him, and he, he was, he's always been my, I, I just don't idolize, I, I don't find anybody else more to idolize more than my father. So okay. I'm thankful to God for him mm -hmm. and for what he's done. We're going to get back with you in a minute. We want to yeah. uh, get a little bit about your school history. But we got to let Larry in on this just a little bit. Larry's got to uh, name some of the, his brothers and sisters. Uh, if you'd start out, Larry, and, uh, and name them, not necessarily in the order of their birth, but however you'd like to present them, we'd like to get all of their names on the record. Okay. Uh, the oldest one, was her name was Esther. None of us, we never didn't know her. She, was, she died, she was about a month old. She was older than uh, Barbara and Jimmy. Uh, my, the second one was, was his name, her name is Bobby Joe, then Jimmy, he the third, then Margaret, she was named after my mother, and May Catherine, she uh, deceased in July of 1995. And next is Sheila, we call her Sheila. And next is Janice, then me, <laughs> Larry. <laughs> All right. And Alan, we call him, he's say Alan Jr., but he's really Alan the, the third because my uh, great grandfather was named uh, Alan and my father named Alan. was Alan, mm -hmm. so his name was Alan. He was the third, right. okay. And then Kenneth, we call him Ken, then Tawana, okay. then my mother had twins, Donna and Tanja, and the baby is uh, Gary. Okay. So that's 14. And, Gar and Gary's the baby. <laughs> Gary's the baby. Was Gary spoiled like all babies usually are? Naturally. <laughs> naturally, <laughs> naturally. Naturally. All right. Uh, we uh, did let our viewing audience know that uh, you have a church, um, Reverend Jimmy, but we didn't uh, let uh, Larry tell what he does for a living. Let's, let's let him talk about that just a little bit. Tell us about yourself a little bit, Larry, would you? Uh, I'm a teacher. I've been teaching for... Uh, uh, 14 years. Uh -huh. I taught, when I first got out of college, I waited four years before I went to college. I graduated from high school in 1972, so I waited four years before I went to college. And after I graduated from college, I started at uh, Fannin Elementary in Grand Prairie. I was teaching a K-2 field for physical education. Then I left there and I went to the McKinney Job Corps. I taught there five years. I was a reading instructor and a, a girls basketball coach and a boys basketball coach. And I left there and I went to work on my master's in North Texas. I took six hours, I took that and I haven't gone back to work on my master's anymore. But then I got on at DISD. I've been there for uh, eight, nine years. And where do you teach at DISD? I teach at Abbott Sydney Johnston Elementary. I'm pre-K to sixth grade physical education coach and I teach uh, sixth grade basketball. All right, uh, we need to backtrack and get your college. Uh, I went to college at Paul Quinn and from 1975 to 1980, I stayed there five years. I didn't go to summer school at all. All right. <laughs> and and uh, it was in Waco at the time. Now yes. it's in uh, Dallas, Texas. Now it's now. in Dallas, all right. Yeah. In 1972, you graduated from? Grand Prairie High School. You're just a mean old gopher then, aren't yeah. you? That's great, <laughs> gopher, okay. We want to put you on the gopher alumni list. We're gonna have to get after him, aren't we, Brother Jimmy? Yeah, and then um, I moved, I stayed in, I lived in McKinney, stayed there, and then I came back to move to North Dallas, and then I moved back to my parents' house for a little while at 1801 Spike. So yes. last year, I remodeled my grandfather's house at 1825 Spike, so that's where how I live now. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. That is super, to live in your grandfather's house. Yeah. So everybody lives, we all lived on Spike Street, seeing like my parents lived on Spikes, my, my father's father lived on Spice and my mother father lived on Spice. That's about four generations yeah. and, and your children, that makes five and all of the, oh, that is a wonderful, wonderful heritage. We're going to get back with you in a minute, Larry, but uh, let's get back to Reverend Jimmy. Uh, we don't even have him in elementary school yet. Where'd you go to elementary school? I went to my full 12 years of uh, school in Grand Prairie at Dalworth High School. And under. you were a dragon. Dalworth Dragon. Oh yes. my. Played football with Charlie Taylor. 
All right. Yeah, we all came And graduated what year? 1961. 1961. Yes. Oh, that is wonderful. Then uh, you followed in the footsteps of uh, uh, Reggie Brown, Mr. Reed, David Daniel. They were, uh, my, they were my coaches. David Daniel uh, has to be mentioned in, in, uh, in this because of his input in all of our lives. He, I've never seen an educator, I've never been one, around one that could teach anybody. Yes. This man had s such qualities of making anybody understand anything. And I've never, him and Miss Sally Moore, I think was the best two teachers uh, that I, I've, ever, I've ever been around. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we had great teachers now. But, so I, I love all of them, but those two stands out in, in my uh, book. And Coach Reed and, of course, with uh, Coach Grant, Coach Brown, Coach Jackson, which is deceased now. And Mr. Talley. Yes, yeah, so they, 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 they played a great part in te bringing us up and giving us character and learning how to lose, learning how to win, and, and, and taking defeat just as good as we can take win. So it was, it's, it was a great thing. And it, it, of course, at that time, there was no integration like it is now. Yes. It was all black school. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was wonderful, and I thank God for it and, and those people that played such an important part in my life. And it was wonderful. When you were in grade school, uh, did you have any earthly idea what you would uh, choose as a career? No, not really. I, I, I uh, really wanted to go uh, behind Charles and play uh, in Arizona State in college. I, yeah. I, went, I went to uh, Jarvis Christian College and visited the campus there, but yeah. I, wouldn't ever, I wasn't content with it, which I wish I stayed. Yes. At the time, but I, I always wanted to go up there and play, and I never and I was never big enough at the time. I played football all through high school, weighing about 160 pounds, mm -hmm. and I never I never get gained any weight until later. <laughs> years. Yes. Till <laughs> so, he started eating good, yeah, didn't he learn? Yeah, yes. So, but uh, I got my call to the ministry in in, in, in 1974, yes. and I've been. Pastoring now will be 16 years this October in, in, the, in the city of West in the city of West Dallas. And now tell us about your church. It's in West Dallas, yes. but uh, True Gospel Baptist Church at 3303 North Westmoreland. Yes. In West Dallas, and it's small membership, but people are great. And our objective is just to lift up Jesus. Mm -hmm. and Do you have a real good outreach in that neighborhood area with children? Yes, we are starting. As a matter of fact, we are on that. Uh, issue now to try to help bring young people into our church. Uh, Brother Larry Bridges brought this program to uh, our attention and we are, still has it on the table, but th this, this is going to be functioning soon to help bring young people in to teach them that uh, Jesus is the way and that's yes. all we need. And if we got him, you got everything. You can, you can avoid drugs, gangs, and Anything else that is negative to life, if you get Christ in your life, because with him you can do all things. All right. Yeah. That sounds good. Larry, what's it like to have a cotton-picking preacher in your family? <laughs> Does he stay on our case all the time, and, and he's against sin and all that kind of good stuff? No, it was, it was a, a blessing, really, that, that he came into the ministry, because he and, like I like to mention Mr. Daniel and Miss Moore, also, they were just like my second mother and father to me. When I was two, because really I didn't walk across. I was the only one in my family when it came to me that just re didn't really just graduate from high school. Yes. I, I stopped and then I went and got my GED because Mr. Good. Daniel and Mr. Moore, they stayed on my back. And then my brother, before he was in the ministry, he used to do all kind of things. You know, he was. You was going to tell, I, I, hope, <laughs> you, you know. I hope you was going to put something on tape that we could ground this yeah, in. Yeah, he was, everything you could name, he did it, you know. But yes. then when he got, got saved, you know. He influenced me, you know, to go to school, you know, try not to walk in the same footsteps. Yes. So that really was a good uplift for me. Yeah. And I also have a son, my oldest son, he's a minister now. All right. Now, yeah. let, let's name your family, your, all of your family. <laughs> we better put your family on or we're all going to be in bad trouble. Uh, uh, you have other children. Name, name your children. I have, my oldest daughter's name is uh, Latoma McCoy. All right. And my son's name is Zachary Zernell. He went to, both of them graduated from Grand Prairie. All right. And I have a daughter named uh, Secura, and I have a son named Matthew. 
Uh -huh. Are they in school? Yes, they're in school. All right, in Dallas? Uh, yeah, both of them in Dallas. One is 14 and one is six year old. Oh, that yeah. is great. That is wonderful. Yeah. And um, of all of the teachers that you had uh, through your elementary grades, uh, you've already named Sally Moore. Were there others that really had an impact, an influence, mentors in yeah. your life? Yes, I went to went to grandpa. I went to Dower from first grade through eighth grade. Yes. So all of Mr. Devin Moore, he was good good influence. Uh, Mr. Talley, uh, oh, Coach yeah. Jackson, where he passed. Coach yeah. Reed, Coach Brown, Mr. Miller. Most all, all of them were great. Mm -hmm. And, and so, then on to Grand Prairie High School. I went to how, Lee how, Junior High School. And, oh, you went to yes. Junior High. Was yes. that Lee? Yes, with Lee Junior High. Right. Miss Terry. I, I just only somebody remember that was Miss Terry. She was my English teacher. Uh -huh. Mr. Vaughn, he was my science teacher. Yes. And they was good teachers also. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And then your transition to Grand Prairie High School. Yeah, I went to Grand Prairie High in tenth grade. Then I went to Sam Houston in Arlington in eleventh grade. Then yeah. I came back to Grand Prairie High. In the 12th grade, I had a lot of scholarship offers, but I was hard-headed, wanted to get out on them streets, you know, and all yes. that. So I was, I don't know, I messed up. So I just waited, stayed out of school four years, and then, and like I said, my brother, he got called, and every time Mr. Moore, uh, Mr. Daniel, Ms. Moore saw me on the street, they were just, son, you just wasting your life, you know, because I was pretty well off in books and I was real great in sports. I'm not bragging or nothing, but I, I was just like Jim Thart. I played everything. I played baseball, basketball. How wonderful. Ran track, I did it all. Mm -hmm. Football, everything. Matter of fact, I tried out for the Cowboys back in the 70s, you know. Yes. But I didn't have that much speed, so, you yeah. know. Then after that, I went on to college, graduated from college. Now, of uh, all of the teachers at Grand Prairie High School, even transitioning in and out from Sam Houston, was there one or two that really did uh, treat you as a, uh, more than a friend, that really did encourage you? Like I said, with Miss, Mr. Daniel Miss, and uh, Miss Sally Moore. But and not at Grand Prairie High School. You yeah, she's at the, when I went to Grand, uh, we're going to Grand Prairie High, she was at Grand Prairie High. She was counselor. Yeah, she was counselor. a counselor. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. She yeah. was on your case, wasn't she? <laughs> she was on my case. And oh, Coach yeah. Brown, Reggie Brown, he was also there. Oh, yes. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Miller was there. Yes. Yeah, he was at. My grandpa? Yes, that's uh, right. Now, Coach Brown was at Sapple. Sapple, right. Yes, that's wonderful. Well, we're going to get back with you in a minute. No, we're, okay. ju we're just glad that uh, between the two of you, we've all gotten our lives pretty well straightened out, but now we got to <laughs> get back uh, with Reverend Jimmy here. Uh, did you go to, uh, when you went to Dalworth and started in the first grade, what did you think about school? I love school. Okay. I left school even before I, I was able to go to school. Matter of fact, I can give you a funny story. Uh, I went to school up there. I used to visit the campus all the time, go up there. And uh, uh, one guy named Clifford West, he's dead now, too. And uh, he was laughing at me, talking about, uh, oh, you can't go to school. And I pick up the rock and hit him, <laughs> hit him with this rock. And uh, Mr. Daniel had some of the bigger guys that run me down and catch me. And, and spank my butt and <laughs> yes, <to> straighten <laughs> you out. Chastise me about it, and uh -huh. but I always wanted to go to school. And then when I was in the sixth grade, I can remember Miss Trim was my teacher, and I had the chicken pops, and I couldn't go. To, didn't supposed to be at school. Yes. And she had my lesson out the window on the porch, and I, I remember I wanted to go to school so bad I would I would even go up there and yes. do my lesson. Then I, I always did love school. Mm -hmm. Always did. Did you ever get to help your dad in the roofing business? Yes. Yeah, he, he, oh, he was, uh huh. We, we we worked together for a number of years, and uh, but it never was my my knack. I never did. Uh, as my brother said, at the time I wasn't in the Lord. The Lord was with me, but I wasn't I wasn't with the Lord. So yes. I thought about doing a whole lot of other things. That's uh -huh. uh, I wasn't very happy about. Get my hands dirty. Uh -huh. <laughs> now we got to name your family. We've not named anyone okay. in your family. Well, my oldest son' name is Raymond Christopher Hawthorne. He's uh, he's the oldest boy, and, and it's not of my marriage. I fathered him when I was sixteen. Yes. And my oldest son in my marriage is Jimmy Earl Hawthorne Jr. All right. And my baby boy is Kristen Daniel Hawthorne. He don't yes. like to be called that. He like to be called Chris. Yes. <laughs> and my baby daughter is the one that. LeMay Hawthorne, she's 16. Okay. She's now going to school at Sam Houston. Jimmy finished college in, in August of 95. Christian finished uh, Sam Houston. 
two years ago, and Dee is a sophomore in Sam Houston now. All right, now which one's in Chicago that I wanted on this show? That's Jimmy Jr. That is Jimmy Jr. Yeah. We couldn't get him back, could no, we? No, couldn't get him here. Yes, <laughs> yes. But he's in Chicago at the time with his fiance, and uh, they're trying to work their way back down here to, to be in this area. Get back into the warm country? Yes. Uh, the rainless country right at this right. time. Right. All right. Um, is there anything that you would like to put on this tape about uh, about your family and the influence that it has had in the Dalworth area over this span of low these many years as a special tribute to your dad, Alan, and how much uh, stabilization he gave the family? With his uh, input in our lives and outlook, like I said, we erased these 13 children my mother had 14, the first one died, as Mary stated. And, but my dad, we never lived in apartments or anywhere. He's always built homes. He, he could do plumbing. He could do mechanic work. That's why I say he is my, my idol. He's, he's, and he's always been uh, a man that wanted to take care of his family. And he's always worked. All of these things was tributes. I, I got to give a tribute to him for that. Then my brother here, after he listened to what we had to say behind going to school, and since he's been out of college, he's always been working toward trying to help kids to see that they can be and bring them up on our black history and be proud of, of being black and knowing where you come from. And, and also, this town, Grand Prairie as a whole, I've seen it come from, from back where we had to go, like I said the other day. Yes. Dairy Queen on the side, and, 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 and Woolworth had a black and white water fountain. Wing Theater, we couldn't sit anywhere but upstairs, and, and all of this. I've seen it now, that it's integration, and, and, and I see God blessing this thing to grow, and people now coming together to see that uh, we all of one blood. I don't care if you chase your heritage back, or mine, or theirs out there. You can't go any further than Adam and Eve. That's so the it. Bible don't lie. That's it. You're all in one blood. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see you on the city council and other people that I know that's changing things. And, and uh, this town is beginning to grow. And like we were saying earlier, I, I remember in the 50s, in the 50s, when it was bigger than Arlington and Irving in population. And Grand Prairie all ha always has been, uh, not standing in the city, but it's, like you said, the forefathers did not uh, have a vision, didn't have a dream. Mm -hmm. But now we see that people like you and other people that's in the leadership of, uh, seats now do have a vision. And uh, my father always had a vision about things. So, and I, I'm glad of that. And this is my brother, or we speak of my baby brother, which you were talking about, the spa. But he's uh, an executive with the Sprint Cooperation. And I'm so proud of him. He's yes. a college grad with, with a master's degree and now beginning working on his PhD. And uh, my sister starting their own business and because of my father's influence there, because yes. now mostly uh, he's always worked for himself. I'm in my own business. I have a beauty and barber shop, a retail store. Two sisters now that's in, uh, uh, but they're in two now. Yeah. The, the yeah. daycare. daycare centers and their own businesses. Oh, great. And, and, and Gary now is also an executive with Sprint and several others is, is just doing things. And it's because yes. of my father's influence and uh, the foundation we had to build on. And I thank God for it. That's a good tribute. And now, Larry, uh, we have about two or three minutes left on this interview. Um, uh, I'd like for you to look out into your camera and let the boy, since you're an uh, administrator in the school system, I'd like for you to talk with the boys and girls how important it is for them to take advantage and how you would like to be remembered. Well, it's very important to take advantage of uh, education because without it, in this society now, you just, you, like I say, it might as well be dead, seriously. Because now that they can have computers working on everything, so you have to learn how to work computers and, and everything. So. It's the, you can be anything that you want to be if you strive for it and put your mind to it. But, you know, if you was an athlete, you got to put the athlete second and put your books first. Right. Because right now, if you, do, if you don't pass, there's no pass, no play. 
So you have to sit down, go in the classroom, pay attention to your teacher, your instructor. If you don't know anything, a lot of us get up get upset because we don't we really don't know what's going on in the classroom. So if you don't know anything, ask the question. Do not let the teacher just go on and go on and just and then we come to a test time, you fail a test when nobody fault but yours. But it's very, very important to get an education. Not just a high school education, get a college education. And then if you can go on to grad school or whatever. And come and I like to say whenever you get these things, a lot of us in the community, we need to put stuff back in the community and help the community. Right. Like I was a president of the organization, I started an organization of uh, uh, Dad worked for Improvement Committee. I was a president yes. for, founding president for three years, and now I'm just a, a member there. And we help people with um, drug problems, uh, teenage pregnancy, the senior citizens. We tried to do it all. And I, and I, you know, everybody out in the audience, like I say, if you, it doesn't matter if you live on the north side of town or, or south side of town, but just put a little back in the community for just nothing but time. That's wonderful. And in the half minute we have left, how would you like to be remembered? As an educator or what? Well, I'd like to be remembered as, you know, as educated people that I was, that if you look at me, if you knew how I was when I was young, you can say if he can make it, I know I can make it. And that's how I looked at it on life. That's wonderful. Right. That's wonderful. And your philosophy of life in the half minute we have left? Uh, Jesus is the answer to everything. I don't care what problem you have. I don't care if you, if it's pure pressure or what. If you give your life to Christ, you can overcome everything and anything in him. I want to thank you two young men very, very much for sharing your lives with us today. And I, I'm just so sad we couldn't have your dad and all of your sisters and your other brothers and maybe some of the kids. And couldn't we have a reunion here if we I'll ever did a, a the, next, the, next time, <laughs> the next time you all have a reunion, I wish you all would invite a poor old Ruthie Jackson there. And maybe we can bring all the right. camera and come and do a, a real tremendous uh, history of the Hawthorne family that's been very important to Grand Prairie. I want to thank you all very much for making our number 270 uh, a memorable tape. Thank you for taking the time to okay. do this. Thank you for inviting us. And right. this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do.